Hello, hello, hello! What's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Monday to y'all. Good to see you, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, three dog? Leon Stu, Varian, Variant, Lord Voice, Loose it. Hey, Chuck, good to see you, good to see ya. Oh, I do, I do have, I do have new pictures of the puppies. Oh my god, I do. I don't know if you want to see them. Am I turning into one of those crazy puppy people? I feel weird. I feel weird about showing off puppy pictures. Do y'all like stuff like that, or is it one of those like, oh, like people put posting like tweets of their food when you're just like, oh my god, like I. I don't care about what you're eating. Like, sure, it looks good, but why are you sharing that? <laughs> to blue pin, to ready spaghetti, gibbage, folu. Oh, how is everyone doing today? I mean, it's going to be fun once we, uh, once we can actually have the puppies. Like, hopefully a month-ish. Uh-oh. I still have a, I still have the donation overlay. Can I, let me see if I can fix this. I guess we haven't streamed Arena since the, since the charity stream, have we? Uh, I don't believe. Um, hang on, hang on. I gotta fix this real quick. Remove. Ha ha! There we go. So hopefully everyone's doing well. They're uh, they're cute. So let's all. All right. All right. All right. I'll show you the puppy pictures. I'll show you the puppy pictures. Then we'll talk a little bit about Jumpstart, and then oh, we're going we're going deep today. We're going deep. We're playing historic. Uh, we're trying to go infinite with a Sarak. That is our goal. That is our hope. That is our dream. We're trying to get an Omniscience on the battlefield. We're trying to get it a Sarak. We're trying to cast it an infinite number of times to combo off and infinitely dungeon opponents out of the game. That is, that is what we're trying to do magic-wise. So, so yeah. Uh, hopefully... Uh, I wonder how this puppy stream is going to go. I'm, like, very, very interested because it's going to be, like, a month. A month to six weeks, most likely, until the puppies are here, and then... <laughs> And then, I don't know how streaming's gonna go. I, I really know. I mean, we're gonna stream. I'm obviously not gonna stop streaming. But, I don't know if the puppies are gonna be, like, cute and lovable. So, uh, so there's one. Oh, yeah, they, they have, they have names now. I didn't, uh, oh, y'all are gonna be mad at me. Oh, we didn't end up going with Hans and Safi. It, it ended up being, ended up not being Hans and Safi. There's, there's two puppies. It's a brother and sister pair. Puppy one, this is the, this is a female. Yeah, Nico ended up being the, the name of the female. So that's, that's puppy one, the cute little, cute little sister. Seepstress for the 25th month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The reason, the reason, no, they're not, they're four weeks. They were four weeks yesterday. So they're, they're still pretty little. Uh, and then that is, that is, uh, that is bear. <laughs> and that's, that's why the name changed. So they were called, they were calling this one bear because it is like the biggest one of the litter and it, it just it's like just big and chubby and bear once once i heard they were calling it it just clicked and i was like okay that's actually like a pretty good name a pretty good name for this uh for this cute little puppy so so nico and bear bear and nico uh those are the puppies so those are the the latest pictures four weeks old and uh yeah pretty soon you'll be able to see him live live on stream luxac i wanted to i wanted to find a magic bear name but they're not good magic bear names welcome to the visual thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you nico is a female name will confuse me every time oh uh, so that is, does anyone know the Nico reference? It's not magic related. If you if you know my taste in music, you will probably get Nico being a female name. <laughs> but but yes, it's a it's a music reference. It's a music reference. Uh yeah, so so yeah, it is yeah. Velvet Underground and Nico. That's that's where the Nico name comes from, but Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, puppies, they're coming, they're coming, we'll have a new house, we'll have puppies, it's gonna be sweet and interesting, and y'all are gonna be along for the ride, you can, we can watch the puppies grow up, we'll have a little puppy cab, so, <laughs> uh, isn't Nico a guy from GTA, maybe, but, uh, N-I-C-O, Nico, like, uh, like Velvet Underground or Nico, anyway, oh, we got new in store Horizons, the spoiler video is up on the YouTube, um, 
Seth, why do we have so few comments on Common Spoiled so far? So, uh, so actually, there's more spoiled, sort of, but a lot of them are reprints. So there's not a ton of there's not a ton of new cards in this set. There's only 31 total total new uh, new cards in the set, and we've got a big chunk of them. Today we got Frailies, which I think Frailies is like legitimately good. One of the few new cards I think is legitimately good. But but anyway, that's about the YouTube. You check it up on the YouTube. Uh, we're oh my goodness, Sarah is coming to Historic for the first time ever. So it's a this is a new to Historic reprint, which is what we focus on with like the spoiler videos and stuff. Worship emblem in historic i'm actually like super excited about sarah sarah's gonna be gonna be interesting one plus worship emblem historic players i don't think know how to deal with worship i don't think historic players ever dealt with it so it might be troll worship time in historic once this set comes out i'm actually really i'm excited for this set. i think this set's gonna be sweet but anyway we got tons of stuff to talk about as we go along uh, we got some good magic questions from mark rosewater but uh, let's do our reminders let's start playing some magic we can talk about historic horizons we can talk about puppies. We also have some uh, some good questions to, uh, to answer from Mo Mark Rosewater that I want your I want your feedback on. So, uh, thank you for the cheer, Joe Brook. I appreciate it. All I ask is that you do a stream with the vampire deck I emailed you. It looked uh, it looked like a fun vampire deck. I appreciate it. Dolly, welcome to the fishbowl for the fourteenth month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So reminders, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Spoiler video is up tonight. We're heading to Modern for Budget Magic. Ooh, uh, it's a it's a pretty cute deck. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited about uh about tonight's Budget Magic deck. So check that out. Podcast will be up as soon as the stream's done. So tons of stuff coming up on the YouTube. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And uh, maybe you need some magic cards, not Historic Horizons cards, but maybe if Forgotten Realms cards or this nice little Primeval Titan or an old Border Original Land of War Waste or a Gazella, which actually we might be playing Gazella in the near future, but you can get them all at cardkingdom.com, even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker, let them know you want one, they'll hook you up. Otherwise, merch page, clean out Richard's garage donations, always appreciated, never required, $2 or more gets your message read on stream and let's talk about this deck that we're starting with so this is a deck that is from the infamous platinum mythic rank player hey what's up old dog how are you so uh so platinum mythic rank player of uh, of memer dream fame you never know they have some really good decks they have some really bad decks this is a platinum mythic rank player deck we're going to uh we're going to give it a shot just straight out of the box we're not going to update it yet and just see what happens the goal of this deck we might upgrade it as we go along hey what's up kimberly girl how are things good to see you um how is the how is the ladder the ladder ranking oh my goodness speaking of the ladder did you see the reddit post did you see the... Oh, yeah, we got our enemy grazer. Did you see the Reddit post of someone who, uh... Who played... <laughs> who played Arena, and they only cast cards in their hand from left to right, so they didn't have any actual decisions to make, and they hit Mythic after 600 matches? <laughs> so if you ever feel bad about Mythic, uh, remember that a bot playing Mono Red Cavalcade can... can <laughs> can apparently hit mythic so <laughs> so we're gonna start with this the idea of this deck is we're gonna ramp and we're gonna ramp and we're gonna ramp we got our best friend grazer we have explorers we got wolf willow havens we got cultivate we got our promises so ramp aggressively hopefully get to omniscience if we get to omniscience then a Sarah just wins us the game we can cast a Sarah for free an infinite number of times going to every non tomb of annihilation dungeon infinite everything win the game with draining from the dungeon so that is that is one of our goals so that's what we're trying to pull off whether or not this is the right build i don't know we might update it as we go along we also have a bunch of fail wishes and in our sideboard we have a little bit of anything <laughs> everything we have guys wasn't for mill we got follow thran for land destruction thousand year storm i have no idea why but might as well elrond's epiphany for an extra turn sabrutus ultimatums we have an overwhelming splendor we have ashiax erasure we have a jace in case we mill ourselves out we got thought distortion for control of mortal set for planeswalker seagate restoration which could probably be in the main deck and even inspired ultimatums so this is like the weirdest jankiest craziest rap deck with a combo finish that is that is the <laughs> that is the idea elkos welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super here thank you thank you thank you is omniscience better than rooftop storm uh there is no rooftop storm in historic so uh maybe 
I, I think it really depends on the deck, but we don't have the option in this format. So, so ideally, yeah, I mean, we're trying to break omniscience. If we can resolve an omniscience, <laughs> if we can, we might be able to win. We'll see. I don't know how strong omniscience is. I don't know if it's really that good, but uh, but we'll see. We're gonna we're gonna give it a try. <laughs> and there's some we got some good backup decks too as well. So, so how was everyone's weekend? How was everyone's weekend? Anyone do anything sweet this weekend? I wasn't sure if we're going to be able to stream today, honestly, because it's spoilers. Usually during spoilers, no Monday stream, but I managed to get the spoiler video up in time, so we uh, we get we get everything. We get spoiler video and also and also a stream. Meh. All right. I mean, we're doing nothing for a long time, but once we get to. Uh, <laughs> Once we get to seven mana, we might do something. Delaware State Fair. Oh my god, Omniscience. Okay. Well, once we get to ten mana. <laughs> once we get to ten mana. Passing a kidney stone. That does not sound enjoyable. As the guy who donated to get you uh, to get a Sarek in the charity stream, you have no idea how happy this game plan makes me. Oh, well, I'm glad you're excited about Alcazo. I'm excited to try it and see if it works. It is never not spoiler season. Seriously. <laughs> that is oh no we keep drawing omnisciences that is very very true it is always spoiler season probably should have played this crawling barons and one two three start ticking it up but i got a week of vacations and tomorrow's my birthday Ooh, yeah i might i might actually have to take a little bit of a little bit of vacation when the moving comes up oh tin fence how did you get your motorcycle license so i actually I really would like to get I would like to get a motorcycle license. The problem is the problem is I'm not really sure how to do it. Because I like how do you did you go to some place? Because the part that I get stuck in, getting a motorcycle, that's easy. Um the part is like how do you practice and get enough hours in to get your license without driving illegally on a motorcycle? I mean, I know how to ride a motorcycle, because, uh, I mean, I'm from upstate New York. They have dirt bikes and all that kind of stuff around here, so I know, I know how to do it, but I've never, I've never actually, like, officially, uh, officially been licensed or anything. I went to Harley, got a certification, and I went to the, ooh, okay. So that's, I probably could do something like that. Have you ever been to Longwood Gardens? I have not. I'm not even, uh, I'm not sure what Longwood Gardens is. What is Longwood Gardens? Um, all right. We'll discard, we'll discard your omniscience. Hinterland Harbor. I mean, the question is going to be, do we get to resolve anything? Like, next turn we can start casting stuff. Will it resolve against a Krim deck? That's the, uh, that's the real question. But I think you gotta like have a permit and drive it so long. Ooh, okay. Well, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be very interesting. Genesis Ultimatum could hit the combo. Seamstress with the gifts up to totes my goats. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, charge it up. All right, Omniscience Acerarak. Let's do it. Explore, land, Genesis Ultimatum. Uh, okay. A Sarak. Bounce it. Um, so we can't go in Tomb of Annihilation. Oh! Hmm. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Scry one. Keep the Faye wishes. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, that's that's combo mana. Oh, can we dodge? Can we not die? We died a Bone Crusher. Watch us die because we didn't go gain one life. That would be embarrassing. Affinity to Squirtle and Dirty Sanchez. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Opponent. Land. Untapped. Uh, we should have gained a life. Oh my god. Oh no. 
Oh no, we should have gained a life. Dirty dentures. <laughs> oh, how are you today? Hey, what's up? Uh, the, uh, what's up, uh, Necro? Nexus, how are you? Does that count as a punt? Maybe. So my, uh, yeah. I guess it probably would be a punt. My worry was milling ourselves out. But maybe that's not something to worry about. Because... How do we see all the dungeons? I guess we can't see all the dungeons. But... Oh, there we go. So my concern was, because the dungeon that wins us the game makes us draw a card, I was afraid that if we went through... If we went through Mad Mage and had to draw all the cards with Mad Mage, that maybe we would we would end up milling out before we won, but I didn't actually think it all the way through. Uh, you have missed half of a match. One one game. Perhaps a, perhaps a game where we may have punted a bit. Well, Thought Distortion in. I don't know why Seagate Restoration... How many lands are in this deck? 26. Like, I don't know why we couldn't just play Seagate Restoration in the main deck. I guess that's a good tutor target. Huh. Well, we were close-ish. Somewhat close. Uh, how's the deck been doing? Well, we've played exactly one game, and almost, almost won. You know you can skip the draw. Wait, how do you skip the draw? Mm, this hand does not do much. Although, if we draw a green source, it's kind of good. Yeah, Alright, we'll mulligan. No, well, all right, all right, all right. This is fine. We will keep. We will put Wolf Willow. You know what? Let's put a land to the bottom. Put a land to the bottom. Well, here comes the wrap. Here comes the wrap. Are misplays and punts not the same? What's the difference? Um, I think that punts are more severe than misplays. I don't know. What's your definition of pun? I think I tend to think of... A misplay is being like a misplay cannot be a big deal. Like there's a ton of playing playing the wrong land on turn one or something. Like that's a misplay. Anything that's not optimal is a misplay. A punt has to be, I think, more more severe. All right, here comes the thought seizes. A misplay may just be imprecision. Yeah, so I think a punt's got to be a higher a higher standard. It's, it has to lose the game. I don't know if that's... Well, yeah, I guess that makes... I could I could buy that. So opponent takes an explorer. Wolf Willow. Go. Punts don't lose football games. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm a Bills fan. They punt a lot, and they lose a lot. <laughs> but they are re they are very similar. And if you use them uh, synonymously, I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue about it. But I tend to think a punts is more more severe. Opponent. Thought he's tribal. Takes a Zerak. Oh no! You have you have Mulligan and had three thought seizes. Come on now. Opponent. Thinking. Passing. We will cultivate. Get a island and a forest. But what into play? Put the other into all right. Pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five. We're getting up there, mana wise, through the dis uh, through the discard. Ooh, historic chatter storm. Yeah, let me let me see it. Let me see it, Benny. Opponent gonna cycle. Are the bills gonna up and move? Saw had <laughs> really. Really, 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 really. All right, so opponent. Many thought seizes have been drawn. We draw nothing, go. Okay. Uh, no! I don't think the bills are actually gonna, are actually gonna move. I think that's a negotiating technique to try to get billions of dollars to build a stadium. Which, I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> I don't know why... I kind of wonder why we have to pay for stadiums. Like, why Why do... Why do the taxpayers of New York or wherever 
Need to buy a stadium for billionaires. Seems like that would be part of owning a business. Like, what other businesses... What other businesses uh, expect the taxpayer to 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 buy their to pay for their building? Isn't that kind of weird? All right. Um. Well, our promise. Does Krim have a counter? Apparently not. Uh, let's see. Three or more deserts. So I don't think we can get. Hmm. You know what this deck needs is a land that draws cards. That would be... That would be helpful. Well, get a Crawling Barrens. Get a... World Tree. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, play this because of Nicole Bolas. Pass the turn. All right, gonna stomp our face. Yeah, if you that I just banned, or it would be insane in this deck. Oasis. All right, so we have all the mana we could possibly need. We need to draw like a Hydroid Crosses, a Fey of Wishes, opponent Glory Brings. Well, here they come. Hits us for a bunch. Charge up Crawling Barons. Charge up Crawling Barons. Take eight. Top deck crosses. Top deck even more lands. All right. All right, many lands have been drawn. Many, many lands. About it. Ooh, let me see, Benny. Oh, sweet mother. All right. Another glory bringer. Like, what are we supposed to... Uh, hmm. Well, we did get triple thought seized. Now I'm not even sure. I guess we gotta draw Genesis Ultimatum to have any shot. Down to two. Well, Crosses. I don't know if Crosses does it here. One, two. Oh, uh, Crosses last turn would have been great, but Crosses now doesn't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is there even a way we can... Oh, is there a number we can cast it? Is there a number we can cast it on that does something? I don't think so. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I guess it's... I guess it's crosses to draw one? And try to hit Genesis Ultimatum? Oh! Oh, if we had drawn the crosses one turn earlier, we would have won. Yeah, I mean... Remember, Glorybringer shoots down all of our stuff. Wow. One turn, one turn off, one turn off. Yeah, I mean, the Glorybringers just shoot down whatever we do. For nine, doesn't get double Glorybringer. Yeah, but if we go for nine, we're at two, we go up to six, they just attack naturally for eight, and we die. Yeah, we'll see. Let's. We're going to do a couple games... We're gonna do a couple games with it naturally, and then we can make some uh, some updates based on based on our experiences to optimize the booty snacks. Handing out a ton of gift subs, five gift subs to the enduring idealist MTG lots, Bobby Ortelli, Awesome Possum, and Krellavaker. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. This is gonna be a good grazer. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this this hand actually looks pretty good. We even got the Fey of Wishes. That's kind of insane. Opponent, Scrappy Scrounger can't get through the grazer. Uh oh. We play this Hour of Promise. Get a desert. And a world tree. Make some zombies. 
Okay, the deck is looking good at the moment. This might be our chance. This might be our chance. <laughs> oh, did did any of you hear the see the the Mark Rosewater questions? There were two Mark Rosewater questions that I wanted to ask all you about. Um, question one. Yeah, I can I can update the record. I think everything got everything got moved around because of uh because of the charity stream. Potent getting frisky. Will kill his crap heap. So the the question question number one that I want your feedback on. Uh, let's explore. Do you want the digital only cards to come to paper? I think that's actually a pretty interesting question. One, two, three, four. Well, that's granted. Tutor from the sideboard. So, Wizards basically said... We know that they'd be hard to play. Well, this feels dirty, but... Epiphany, go. We know that they'd be hard to play, but do you want them? Yes, but not legal in anything like old border cards. That's uh, that's kind of my initial initial take. They definitely can't be legal anywhere. Like, there's no way. Like most of the digital only cards, there is, there are ways that you could play them, not easily, but there are technically ways that you could sort of kind of almost play with them. Some people seem to want them. Yes, but we need a way to handle them. Seek would be revealed from the bottom. Ah, so I don't think that they can change them to work with... Ah, I don't think they should change them to make them work in paper. That kind of defeats the whole purpose, right? I think they'd have to be like... I think they'd either have to be silver-bordered and you could rule zero them into your commander games if you wanted to, or... Yeah, they probably would have to be silver bordered. Like, I don't know. You can't have them be legal in paper. Like, could you imagine how they would play in paper? Imagine like, like they're they're all just some of them are pretty clunky. Where's where's the new Frailies? It has all like okay, Frailies is a great example because it has all the new mechanics on it. Perpetually, there are ways you could make perpetually work. It's not it's not clean. Oh my god, one two three four five six seven eight nine. Uh, cra cra. Draw some. Wow, this is super over. We're not comboing at the moment, but uh, yes, you're go about it. So I think you could all make them. You could make them work perpetually. It's clunky, but you could like use mark your sleeves to track it or something. So it would be it would be possible. Seek is the hardest. Seek. I guess you'd have to have someone else do it for you, basically. Like, I think with Seek, you would have to, like, have a friend or a judge. You'd have to, like, have a friend or a judge. Search through your deck and grab a random card somehow. And then Conjure, it really depends on what you're conjuring. Like, conjure a regal force, that's easy. Just, like, proxy a regal force and put it into play. When it's proxy or conjure a group of cards, then it gets a lot more cumbersome. So all that to say, I think you could technically do it, but it would not be easy. It would not be enjoyable. It would not be fun, which makes me kind of against it to some extent. Just because I don't feel like it would be fun to play with. Like, if it's going to take you five minutes to activate a card, is it even worth that card existing? I'm not I'm not sure that it is. So I have, I guess I have mixed feelings. Like, I, I'm not, like, against it, but I don't know if it'll be as... I don't know if it'll be as sweet as people are hoping. It seems like it's just going to lead to some really clunky games. Uh, well, I mean, pass the turn. Come on! Oh yeah, I forgot to. The record is not updated. We are definitely, we are definitely not four zero. I mean, it would be interesting. 
The other thing I worry about is we're trying to we're trying to win with a Zerak. A Zerak Omniscience, infinite infinite venturing combo. Um the other thing I worry about is I feel like, and you can yell at me and tell me I'm wrong and off base and an idiot, and you might, but I feel like, what do you think of this take? I feel like if Wizards is going to print these digitally exclusive cards, they gotta be they gotta be more exciting. Go further. Like I feel like the current setup where they're like printing. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, Fay of Wishes granted. Let me come back to that and then you can yell at me. Um, inspired ultimatum. Uh, target player gains five life, five damage to any target, draw five cards. Okay, ne one, two, three, next turn. Next turn is the turn. Next turn is the turn. Where we go infinite. Play that. Play that. Play that. Sure. A Zarak. Get the fun started. All right. Oh, we're going to pull it off. It's going to happen. Lost mine. Scry. Please don't thought seize us. Cultivate to the bottom. Go. All right, all right, infinite, infinite dungeon. Oh, it's gonna, ha I think it's gonna happen. Come on, no scooping, no thought seizing. Scrap, sure. Scrap heap is fine, scrap heap is fine. Hoo. Hoo. It's happening, it's happening. Omniscience. A Zerak. Oh, the clicks. Pick it up, make a goblin. Infinite creatures. A Sarak. Drain you. A Sarak. Draw a card. <laughs> we broke we broke omniscience. This new omniscience card. We have found a way to break it. A Sarak. Uh yep, lost mine. Scry. Don't need you. Wow, is our opponent really gonna sit through this? A Zarek. <laughs> they might. Uh, we'll make a goblin. <laughs> oh, this this is. I I just assumed opponents would scoop. I'm surprised our opponent's actually sitting through it. Drain you. A Zarek. I mean, I think we can speed it up. This is kind of sweet. Draw a card. Another omniscience, because we can pick up this. Discard, discard. Fay of wishes. There's got to be a way to. There's got to be a way to speed this up. Fay of wishes. Um. Thousand year storm. This is not speeding it up at all. <laughs> not speeding it up, but that's fine. Day of Wishes. Discard, discard. Cast it. <laughs> Double trouble. We will get Seagate Restoration. We will get Inspired... Are we going to kill ourselves? Inspired Ultimatum. Oh, we, we can't cast Seagate Restoration, can we? That's gonna make us die. Play the land. All right, po <laughs> Fonit's, Fonit's done. Fonit's done. Yeah, that was, we did. I didn't think that through. I didn't think that through. All right. So here's what I was trying to ask you earlier. Here's what I was trying to ask you earlier. So, and tell me if I'm off base with this take. But here's what I'm kind of thinking about these new cards. I'm thinking that the current setup. Yeah, we probably should have gotten Jace and milled out. You're right. That would have that would have sped it up. Lustful Jades, welcome to the fishbowl. The Monday's going well. Thank you for your subscription. Big Super Jeffrey, thank you, thank you. Oh, there are there are dog names. There are. They're not the ones we were thinking, but they they have been named. I'll show you in a minute. So here's what I'm thinking. 
Right now, I feel like we kind of got the worst of both worlds. Wizards has angered a big chunk of the community by printing digital-only cards, but for the most part, those digital-only cards are so underpowered, they're not really going to do anything, and most of them aren't even, like, that cool. Like, perpetually, it's kind of like a counter. A lot of them are, like, super close to being printable paper magic cards that are just, like, slightly twisted so they wouldn't work easily in paper. What do you think of the idea that Wizard should be should be printing crazier exclusive cards? Like, if we are going down this path, and if Wizards is going to be printing digital exclusives, that they should be more crazy, the yogg Saran, like, over-the-top digital wackiness, rather than, like, almost paper printable, but not quite, and call them digital, uh, digital exclusives. I kinda, I kinda am thinking that right now. Like, that's kind of where I'm at, is, like, maybe they should just... If they're going to go down this path, they should embrace it fully and go all the way down this path instead of, instead of like, just sort of, like, dipping their toes in the water a little bit, but not really going all the way. Would Rune Historic want strong pieces, not strong archetypes? I mean... My my thing is, if they're going to do these digital exclusives and they're going to be an historic, that it also has to be, that it also has to be teamed with Pioneer coming to Pioneer coming to the to the client. So then there'll be this crazy wacky digital format for people who want it, but then there will also be a paper, a paper centric format that you can play if you don't want it. And then you can just go crazy with, with Historic and print the Yogg Sarans and print the most over-the-top things, and I think that's fine. Oh, would have been a good hit of land there. Well, pass the turn. Pi oh, that's I actually played Pioneer this week. There's actually, I don't know if this is going to go well or not, but there's actually going to be a Pioneer video coming up this week. And uh, I will be curious to see what people think if uh if anyone enjoys it well let's uh let's craw craw a little sad craw but play the craw pass the turn content creator secret lair would be cool Ooh, well i already just send content creator a secret lair <laughs> apparently uh not me necessarily i i didn't get one but some content creators. Well, block the scrounger, take her beads. Upload it. Choosing. We just need to hit our land. Each player discards. Interesting. Um, well, Arena's ultimatum down. Untap. Huh, omniscience. Now that's a, a minute away from being good, isn't it? Um, Ha. Huh. Crosses. X2. Draw some cards. More explores. Pass the turn. Sorry for disturbing, but my four-year-old son wants to click the tome pad. Oh, wait. Oh, this one. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a dog. It reminds me of a dog. <laughs> Uh, well, the tome has been clicked. This isn't, this isn't going well. We have the same amount of lands as our mono black, as our mono black aggro opponent. <laughs> and we just, uh, are not, are not getting lands, period. World tree. Well, explore. There's a land. Explore. Grazer. Land. Well, those are a couple lands. I don't know if it's enough. Any spoilers on what the Pioneer video is? Ooh. Uh, oh, we needed the Fae Wishes. All right, opponent draws a Thought Seize. Has a bunch of creature lands. Goes to combat attacks. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Down to seven. Cultivate. 
doesn't do a whole lot. Well, we will cultivate. Get a land, get a land. A Sarak. Scry. N not you. Play the lad past the turn. Opponent plays a lad. Uh, what annoys me about digital cards is how many rotations we've had on Arena now, and we still don't actually have a standard post-rotation format for it. Historic has become more and more about new special cards. Instead, it feels like these new digital cards... It feels like these new digital cards show they aren't going to give us what they promised with the very first rotation. Huh. So I see what you're saying, although my feeling is like, yeah, this isn't going to do anything. Yeah, we're super dead. So my feeling is it's not really possible. Yeah, we're just, I mean, we're straight up dead. Um, my feeling is it's not really possible to have a format that is non-rotating and also gonna let you play your standard cards like because what happens is the format gets bigger like look at modern look at modern and your typical your typical card from standard is just not going to be strong enough for modern uh so now you bought whatever you know, Salt Eye Control or Mono White Aggro or the Sacrifice deck, the chances of you actually being able to play those cards in standard once they rotate are pretty small. Maybe you can play a card like a Bone Crusher Giant or something, or a, maybe a Love Struck Beast in a specific deck, or a Winota in a specific deck, but I feel like that's just inevitable as formats get bigger. I don't know what the solution to that. I think the solution is having an economy that functions <laughs> like i think that's the real issue the issue isn't that you don't have a good my my thing is the issue isn't that i don't have a good place to play uh my cards after rotation it's that cards are so prohibitively expensive and you don't have any way to control them that the whole system just doesn't come across as very friendly to players so i think that's the issue. Well, let me see, Dapper. I built this deck a while back. Looks a lot better. Wonder if I can take a look. Ooh, let me see. Let me take a look. Bears, but not really. Ooh. Some, uh, some two twos for two? <laughs> I mean, I think that's a <laughs> cheat adventure. Oh, uh, I mean, that maximizes the mana value of, uh, of Luris with all the two drops. Uh, I mean, I think that's a funny idea. I have no idea. It's hard for me to imagine how the, the random two drops will will work together to uh to kill opponents. But uh I think that's uh I like the theme and the flavor of the deck. I mean I guess you can just draw a bunch of burning trees and cast a, a Tarka's command and uh and get there. Also, Chatterstorm, eh? From, uh, from Bennymon. Yeah? I mean, Storm is gonna be interesting in Historic. It's still missing Rituals. Like, that's the... That's the biggest issue, but this looks like a, a solid, uh... A solid Chatterstorm deck to me, Benny. Alright, we will play first. I don't know about the idea of not being able to cast our cards unless we have World Tree. Like, what do you do with a hand like this? I guess mulligan. Like, we just don't do anything for too long. All right, we'll keep. World tree to the bottom. Oasis, Grazer. Put a land into play. Ronald Grinder! Uh, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Hey, Seth, what do you want to see the most from the new Innistrad sets? Of course. Let the discarding begin. Uh, land. Cultivate. Island Forest. Put one into play. Pass the turn. What do I want to see the most out of Innistrad? Eh, Alright, more lands. I mean, we're getting our mana this game. That's for sure. Gonna need to draw a Grazer or something that lets us, uh, lets us draw cards. 
So I think the biggest thing I've noticed about this deck is... Oh, jeez. Um, Alright. So opponents just, like, discard central. Well, we will explore. I think that the ramp should probably all be... Should probably all be card draw ramp, like grow spirals. Interpid Gamer, one year resub. Welcome to the fishbowl. Big super here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I think the idea is to make zombies with Hour of Promise. Opponent, spawn of mayhem. Cultivate. Get some lands. Play some lands. I mean, do we draw? Do we draw action? Yeah, I feel like we can improve this deck greatly. I feel like this Platinum Mythic. <laughs> Platinum Mythic ranked player. You never you never know a Platinum Mythic ranked player. They are not known for the most logical of builds. Brentford Medford, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is it me or does Harmonic Prodigy seem pretty good? I like Harmonic Prodigy a lot. Hey, what's up, Jake Jesus? How are you? Opponent. Gonna hit us for a billion or two. I guess we gotta tell oh, we're just if we don't draw some action, we're just dead. Like the game is the game is ending unless we draw a real card like right now. Crawling Barons, not the real card we we're hoping for. Ugh. Ugh. Dr. Shandor! Welcome to the fishbowl. Big super here for you. Thank you, thank you. Uh yeah, so Harmonic Prodigy, it's really sweet with shamans. I think that's the the sweetest tribe that we've played it in. Opponent goes attacking, we block and take a few million more. Opponent. Uh, Commander Clash stats episode should be this Friday, uh, when Commander Clash normally goes up. Alright. Well, this is it. This is the, we need to draw something insane right this second. Not in a turn. Not in two turns. Now. Or we are super dead. And then we're gonna go try to fix this deck. That's not it. Omniscience. Okay. Alright. Well, we experience Platinum Mythic Rank Player's build of this deck. The combo is cute, but good lord. Platinum Mythic Rank Player. <laughs> Platinum Mythic Rank Player. Uh... The deck seems like it is just constantly empty-handed. <laughs> all right, all right. So how do we how do we fix this deck? Uh, number one is uh, for sure a million percent. Every all the ramp should be drawing us cards. I don't know why we're playing three of a lot of things. That makes me think that uh, that makes me think that someone was a little un uncertain with uh, with what they were trying to do with the deck so ram needs to be drawing cards number one um there needs to be more card draw which is we can overload on seagate restoration like that's a freebie why would we not be playing a million seagate restorations it's a land why would we not have that in our deck um so i think that's that's also a big one isn't Saltai version better? What would, uh, what would, I mean, this is technically Saltai, but what would, uh, what were you thinking from Saltai? Oh, you mean trying to play Saltai, the Saltai ultimatum? But you only get two cards, so how do you, uh, how do you get the combo? That would be my, that would be my concern, actually getting the, the combo. But I mean, how do we how do we get the combo out of that? We get omniscience and a Sarerak, but then we then they don't have to give us the combo. We like get to keep a Sarerak and something else, and don't get the omniscience. A single Azusa, Azusa, I guess could be worth could be worth considering. It's a little, a little fragile. Do you rate people's decks? I love playing historic. I have a super budget go white self mill deck. I'd love to take a look at it. I can, <laughs> I can give you a rating if you, uh, if you want. All right, so we can cut some. I think the trio makes sense because we want to be able to cast this. 
Arch of Araska makes sense. I don't know about this desert plan. Like, are are making two 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 zombies really that essential? Do we even want all these world trees? I guess we kind of do. I think put Flood of Tears combo to work. Uh, I think Flood of Tears combo would work better for putting Omniscience into play. I mean, Flood of Tears can get Omniscience into play pretty quickly. That is true. Abundant Harvest over Grazer. Hmm. My concern with cutting Grazer is <laughs> we might need it as a roadblock. Or, like, if we don't play Grazer, are we just going to get absolutely run over by any sort of aggro deck? That would be my that would be my worry. I don't know about these deserts plans. I'm not even like sold completely on on Hour of Promise altogether. Have you tried five color bard class prismatic bridge niv mizzet? It's the truth. Ooh, uh, I ha I haven't. Do you uh do you have a a deck list? <laughs> Uh oh, is the stream is the stream being weird? Laggy? Oh yeah, it's huh. Yeah, something's a little weird with it. It's uh it's dropping some frames. I don't know why. That's not great. Hopefully it hopefully it holds. <laughs> Druid cast for life gain or another way to close out the game. Hmm, Druid class could be cool. Ah, oh, Golos. Is Golos just cheating, though? <laughs> is it too easy? I mean, Golos is busted. How do we feel about Golos? Hey, General Chow! Good to see ya! Welcome, welcome, welcome! If the goal is to get to seven for ultimatum, I mean the goal is to get omniscience on the battlefield and win with a Sarak. That is the that is the main the main goal. Like that's that's the whole reason we're doing it, is to try to combo a Sarak for the infinite dungeon thing. I think outside of that, ugh. I don't know if it's if then it's just a ramp deck if we're not going infinite. Maybe something like that? That gives us more card draw. We don't have a grazer. Still a little worried about getting getting run over by aggro, but maybe we can just ramp fast enough. I mean, Golos is good, and it does fetch lands. Casting Golos is too slow for historic. Really? All right, let's let's try it like let's give it a shot like that. I mean, we got some backup decks too, so we can always switch decks if we need to. Assuming the stream stays alive and doesn't lag out of existence altogether. Why is it lagging so much? That's so weird. Awesome, dude. Hey, good to see you. How's the how goes the summer? Awesome, dude. Hello, hello. Oh, here's the here's the second question we didn't get to. Second, second question from Mark Rosewater. How do you, do you want a space set? Wow, the stream is lagging like crazy, isn't it? Do you want a space set? And, oh no, here comes the elves. What do you think of a space set or a... Or a steampunk set. Do you want sets like that in Magic? Only a few weeks left till I'm back on the grind. Oh, it's been going well, awesome dude. It's been it's been a busy oh boy, we're getting we're getting elf like crazy. Space seems weird to me. Space is a tough one. I feel like steampunk, we already did a little bit of that with with Kaladash. Oh no. Well, yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, Platinum Mythic Rank Player. Why Platinum Mythic Rank Player? Why? <laughs> uh, I was confirmed there was going to be a Warhammer 40k Commander deck for Universes Beyond. Although Universes Beyond is like not, I don't think, canon 
I don't know. It's hard to keep track. That's where they landed on that, right? That Universes Beyond is not is not canon. I mean, isn't Kaladesh pretty steampunky? Yeah, I mean, I guess the Grazers wouldn't have saved us. A Sweeper would have saved us, perhaps. Well, we'll see. Elves are just... Elves die to Sweepers, but if you don't have a Sweeper, Elves kill you quick. About it. Llanowar Elves, and... Passes. Well, world tree number two. About it. Is Warhammer 40k set in space? Gets and hits us. Now cultivate. Get some lands. Ugh. I don't know if we. Do we live long enough to do anything here? About it. Do you have a lord? Land. Hits us. Yeah. Down to 15. Growing rights. Hit Lamak. Goes digging. Oh, Golos gonna have to save us. We need to Golos into Omniscience combo off with the game. Uh. Well, playing a Oh my god, Crater Huff. Okay. Golos. Yes, we would like a land. Take a, it really doesn't matter. Crawling barons. All right. All right, Golos. All right, Golos. It's up to you about it. Ooh, it could be close. This could be close. Uh, will the 40k set be near the Neon Destiny set release? We, we don't, we don't really know when any of the Carnage Tyrant. We don't really know. Ooh. Hmm. We don't really know when any of the... Oh my god. Universes Beyond stuff is going to release. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, okay, so we're, we're dead. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. We did not hit an Omniscience. And we're... Yeah, we're literally dead. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what is going on with Twitch. Uh, ho I keep hoping that it's just going to get better. Otherwise, otherwise, I, I mean, I can, I can try restarting the stream real quick. I don't know if that'll fix it. Hopefully, maybe it's okay now. I don't know why all of a sudden it must be something with my internet. It looks good at the moment. Let me know if it starts. It looks like it's fine now. Maybe try refreshing. Try refreshing, and I think hopefully it's good. The stats look good now. There were some drop frames a minute ago, but maybe maybe we're past that and we're good now. Was Golos a spin to win? Well, the card that wins is Omniscience, and Genesis Ultimatum goes... Genesis ultimatum goes um, deeper than Golos. So I think we're better off. I think we're better off going with the ultimatum than Golos. Because all that matters is hitting omniscience. Yaki! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really can't imagine. I really can't imagine what a magic set in space is going to look like. Like, that's. That's really weird to me. I just really don't... Ugh. I'm having a hard time, like, picturing it. Well, explore. Put a land into play past the turn. Yeah, I think we're good. We must have had a rough patch with the internet, but I think we should be... We should be good now. Opponent passes. Land. Yeah. Opponent. Need a uh, need to separate our concept of what outer space is. Well, what is the magic concept of space? Aldrazi? Aldrazi in space? <laughs> uh, I guess that would be kind of funny. Yellows. I feel like our opponent's wow, not playing a counter spell deck. 
or at least not countering Golos. Uh, crawling Barons. Seagate Restoration. No. Opponent. Thinking. Cycling. Oh, wow. We might be in there. Opponent. Needs something pretty good. They can't let this Golo spin or they're going to be in serious trouble. Teferi. Sure. So they are control. Okay, gonna draw. Untaps. Well, land. Kill to fairy. I won't let you win. Ugh. Hmm. Oh! No. Oh, come on. Oh. I don't even know if I want to keep playing this game now. I don't even know if that's a... I mean, I guess that's a punt. That's an arena. That's an arena pun. That's not like a, you messed up the game of magic. That's a... Uh, that's disappointing. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's just a digital magic thing. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. Opponent. Very slowly. Activating their Teferi. Somewhat tempted to just chain scoop. <laughs> oh, we were trying to go with cut. Uh, we were trying to cancel Golus's ability and uh, ended up passing our turn. So we did absolutely nothing, and now we're we're buried under a Teferi and will not resolve a spell for the rest of the game. Uh, alright, well. Crosses, that kind of gets around counters a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's like a... That's like a game... A game ending. Uh, a game ending. Whatever. But, uh, I'd rather put on Arena versus Moto where it costs literal money. Ah, I guess that's I guess that's true. All right, what do you got, opponent? Wrath of God. And tap land, untaps. Huh, if only we could resolve something, it'd be so sweet. Explore. Play a land. A Zerarak. About it. Considering. Ha. I'll gain a life. A Zerarak. Yeah, Teferi's in good shape. I mean, we just... We can't resolve anything. That's the... That's the... That's the current issue, is the resolving of things. Like, resolving a Fae of Wishes to get something from the sideboard would be nice, but... Let's skip to the good part. Also impractical. Uh, I can't get over the price of events on Moto. They seem proper expensive. Yeah, so events on Moto, they well, they also have removal. <laughs> um, events on Moto do cost like ten dollars usually, but at the same time, they also have like pretty valuable prizes, which makes them a lot cheaper than it probably looks. All right, opponent Magma Opus. Bop, uh, Bop is welcome to the fishbowl for the second month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm. 
Is there anything we could do here? Yeah, I mean, I guess we play Omniscience and then Scoop. About it. Do you have a counter? Wow, okay. They may not have a counter. Genesis Ultimatum. Do they really just have no interaction? Wait, are we going to win? Huh? After all this, we're just gonna... Our opponent doesn't have an answer? Uh, Zarak. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have overcome our, our punt and Apparently, we are going to go infinite and win this game somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> this is so unlikely, but we will accept it. Treasure token. I mean, this is deterministically game. A Zerak. It's going to take an infinite number of clicks to do it. Scry 2. But we got there. Uh, bottom, bottom. Well, at this point, I think our opponent would have countered if they could, right? There's no way... There's no way they would have not countered. I mean, this is just game. We gotta cast this a million times. I'm kind of shocked that our opponent had no interaction. I guess when you play against Krim decks, you just always assume that they have a counter, but sometimes they actually do not have a counter. Well, Zarek. A way to speed up this process would be nice. Draw some cards. Play an explore. Play a land. Granted. Get a Jace. Play a Jace. Fay of Wishes. Pick up Fay of Wishes. Oh, we don't have the mana yet. All right. All right, all right. We got to do this again. Azerak. <laughs> oh, my God. So many clicks. To the bottom. Well, the combo, I mean, when we win, we really go all the way and win. Azerak. <laughs> Triggers. Treasure. Now we can pick up Fay of Wishes. Discard and discard. Granted. For Thousand Year Storm. Thousand Year Storm. <laughs> what a wild ride. What a wild ride. Panharmonica on the wishboard speeds it up. Hmm. That actually could be worth it. I wonder if this deck needs some real sideboard cards. Maybe going full, maybe having a full wish board might be a little excessive. Like this would be a nice matchup to have a counter to counter back. Although th thought distortion's insane if we can do it. All right, we pull off the combo. We pull off the combo, that's the most important thing. If I were your opponent, I would make a snack and let you go to town. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping opponent scoop because that is so many clicks. So what is, assuming you play Historic, what uh, what deck do you want to build most in Historic once we get all these new cards? I think Ninjas is still high on my list, but there's a few Ninjas. 
Yeah, the the wishboard seems. I mean, this remember, Platinum Mythic rank player is a uh, is where this deck came from. But yeah, we do not need that many cards uh, in the wishboard. Ooh, hardened scales look sweet. Yeah, the looping of combos. That's always an issue with digital magic. Moto's gotten better at it, but it still it still is an issue. Girl spiral. World tree. We need a we need a carnage tyrant. It would be sweet if uh, sweet if slivers actually work. Soul herder is also very high in my list. Oh my god. Narset. Everyone's favorite crim walker. Yeah, I think affinity actually could have a chance to be pretty good. Ninja soldiers, zombies, hardened scales, enchantments. I there's just so many cool things to build. Like, the list is so long of sweet decks to build. Well, keep rampant past the turn. Narset whiffs. Oh, boy. Well, I don't usually feel bad for control players, but I feel a little bad for this control player. Cultivate. Land, land. Land, land. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Well, we can beat control on two lands, apparently, maybe. Opponent, Magma Opus. <laughs> Discards it. Adapts. Passes. Well, uh, play the land. Huh. Narset is super obnoxious. That is for sure. Golos. Resolves. Ooh, Arch of Araska might help. Arch of Araska. Go. Pass the turn. Opponent. I don't know why your opponent kept this hand. Hardened Scales and Orky Jelly is going to be great. Jelly is actually a sweet card. This week, this week for Against Odds, we're playing... Ooh, all right. This week for Against Odds, we're playing Vorpal Sword. And, uh... There may, there may or may not be some Jellies involved, and Jelly is actually, like, kind of a sweet card. All right, so Golos down, that's fine. Opponent does find a land. I don't play the land past the turn. Narset. Ah! Opponent finds a land. I don't draw a card. A Serac. Pick it up. Scry. Yeah, that's fine. A Serac. Make a goblin. Land. A Zarek. Train you. Go. All right, this goblin is responsible for taking down this Narset. That is a that is a plan. Orky, the Orky Jelly. <laughs> when is Hull Breacher gonna get spoiled for Historic Horizons? Oh my goodness. I hope that it's not. Oh no. Hull Breacher and Historic would probably be kind of busted. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what? Let's just do this. Let's explore. Eberio Blazo with the one year of Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, ooh. Ooh, that's a good one for next turn. Let's do this. Finish a dungeon. Draw a card. If 
pay of wishes. I mean, we have so much more mana than our opponent. Nazar Narset is already pretty annoying. That is true. Opponent does have a counter. They can flip their Ezkanta. Passes. Well, that's a ultimatum. How are you feeling about this opponent? Has a veto. Well, crosses. Hmm. Yeah, crosses for five. The problem is Asera. Asera doesn't do a whole lot until we get it omniscience. Like we've get, we've spent so much mana casting. <laughs> A Zerax and it just doesn't do anything. I just want to make a really janky Paralives Mons Skirk Prospector combo deck. Ooh. That actually sounds pretty uh pretty spicy. That's not bad. Uh opponent. <laughs> How you feel about a thought distortion? <laughs> thought distortion's so good. We just need our omniscience. We haven't found the omniscience and we got the full combo. Gear Hulk, certainly. Sure. Opus. Well, okay. Resolves. Opponent. <laughs> Woo! That's pretty good. Crosses for six. <laughs> oh, that was a blowout. Hogag might be too. Hogag would be too strong, wouldn't it? I feel like Hogag would be too strong. Yeah, casting it pre before resolves is kind of an awkward. Oh, there it is, omniscience. Did you draw a counter? An opponent. Okay, okay. We comboed. We comboed. I actually. What do you think about changing decks? How do you feel about switching it up? I kind of feel like <laughs> we saw the combo do its thing. We know it's possible, but I mean, it's neat that. It's one of those things that it's neat that it exists. Like, I'm glad that we we pulled it off and saw that you can do it. But after playing the deck, the deck doesn't feel that interesting. It's kind of just like a ramp deck. And we're playing, you know, kind of a weird, a weird finishing package. So it's cool that we pulled it off, but I think what a, what do we want to try? What do we try? There is here's here's some options. Give me your give me your opinion. Uh, I don't know about Grixis Control. Yeah, and paper would be a lot smoother. Then you're just like, hey, I just win the game. So here's here's some of our historical options. So uh, we still haven't played Maze's End. If you're still in the ramp mood, but want to go much more budget and much jankier mazes ends a possibility uh there is this black staff artifact deck which kind of interesting basically kind of a like an in soul artifact style deck we're trying to play cheap artifacts upgrade them with skilled animist with black staff of water deep so that's kind of more aggro uh we've already played green light life a bit historic bard class we could work on that more uh it is really sweet when it when it goes off, uh, I think we could do some tuning, but it is a really spectacular deck when it goes off. Reanimator, I don't think we've played in a, in a while, uh, but we could do some reanimating. It seems like it seems like people are uh, are interested in Blackstaff. Uh, Hammer Time, we just played a bunch of Hammer Time last stream though, but Hammer Time also potentially on the list. Mazes End and Blackstaff seem to be the most popular. You know, uh, you know what? We can probably, we can probably do, we can probably do both. I think we can just do both. All right, let's let's start with Blackstaff. Blackstaff has gotten the most comments, and then maybe we'll do some mazes ending too. Yeah, we can. We can do a poll. Do you want to do a poll? All right, we'll do a poll. 
We'll do we'll do a poll. Let's do let's do uh, a quick poll. Uh, so what's next? Black staff artifacts, mazes, and reanimator. I think those were the main contenders, right? Those three. I guess bard class. Bard class. We'll leave hammer time. You know what? Hammer time. We'll put them all. Every possible option is on the poll. Poll is going in the chat. Vote away. Vote away. Get your votes in. Let us know what to play uh, next. Yeah, Vintage Cube is still on Moto. We might do some vintage cubing at some point. I don't think we're going to vintage cube today, but perhaps in the future. Kasima is great with staff. Wait, Kasima? What is... Oh, the the backside? That is a cool way to hit, uh, hit the lands. Max Rebo, welcome to the fish bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, I haven't figured out what. Oh, Twitch polls. They don't. They don't work very well. <laughs> that's always the. That's always the issue. Get your votes. Oh, wow, Blackstaff is killing it. Another. Another minute. Another minute or two. But it looks like we have a clear hierarchy of decks. Blackstaff crushing absolutely crushing the field followed by mazes ed so it must i think that's our that's gonna be our uh our lineup most likely start with start with blackstaff if we have time to do some mazes ending dirty sanchez with the gift sub to tim ot welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super here for you thank you thank you thank you streaming ff uh xiv i've only ever streamed magic well i guess we did a i think I think the poll is spoken. The poll is spoken. Blackstaff is by far in the lead. So Blackstaff and then Mazes then if we get to another one. Um Ooh, let me let me see, Sai. They're back to me losing a bunch of games because I thought Blackstaff could animate treasure tokens and basically build around that. Ooh. Yeah, non-token. I'm not sure why they have the non-token. I guess probably to prevent exactly that, but... <laughs> oh, Vorinclex reanimator, eh? Ooh, getting back Vorinclex with a, with a Planeswalker does seem pretty devastating. All right, so... This deck, this is a Blackstaff deck. Let me see if I can uh, put the deck list in the chat. So... The idea of this deck, this is an aggro deck. Yeah, I mean, maybe it'd be too good. That reminds me, I found a Scryfall not only has random option, but you can choose search functions. So you can exclude lands or only look for commanders. Yeah, that could that could be an interesting way to try it. Uh, so, the idea of this deck, we are trying to... We are trying to play cheap artifacts. Ornithopter, Silver Raven, Ginger Brew, Hope of Gripper, if it's a cheap artifact in the deck, and then qu quickly turn them into 4 4s with Blackstaff of Waterdeep or with Skilled Animator and basically beat our opponent down. And that's kind of the plan. It's like it's like an in-soul artifact style deck. It's pretty close to being budget friendly actually everything's budget friendly in paper but on arena i don't know if it's actually budget friendly because hope of and stuff like that so uh so that's basically the plan i don't know about casima i'm not really sure uh i'm not 100 percent sure about casima let's try it like this i i i don't know if <clears throat> i'm not sure if i think Casima would be good enough. And execute. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe too good limited. Like it's okay if it's rare. Is a huge limited bond. Yeah, that's that's true. I can send you an email how it works with examples if you want. Scribe for random with search function. Yeah, if you want to, Wolf. Hey, what's up, Flippy Flappy? How are you? We need a. Ugh. No colored mana. Huh. We're on the draw. This hand is like a colored source of mana away from being good. 
We have the black staff. We have the we have everything we want except colored mana. On the other hand, we don't have that many lands in the deck, and if we don't draw them, we just straight up lose. Well, all right. Go 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 go, Ginger Brutes. <laughs> Come on, Gingerbread Man. Uh, there's no Tempered Steels in this deck. No, this is a this is a, a scissors a scissors style artifact deck. Crowd pleaser, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. About it. Takes animator. Well, hmm. I guess we better play the black staff. Marade, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you. Well, get down the black staff and. Oh boy. Another Crim deck? So many Crim decks. Silver Raven. Scry. Uh, don't need an island. Untap land. Ginger Brute. Uh, probably going to be playing this if I choose to play a Stork after Jumpstart. Rakdos Delirium. Ooh. Need Tempered Steel. I feel like... Wow, we've played a lot of Control today. Apparently Control's a pretty popular expressive iteration. I feel like if you play Tempered Steel, then... Yeah, I think it's two different decks. I think the... I think that... Black Staff of Waterdeep and Skilled Animator most likely... Most likely don't fit in the same deck as Tempered Steel. I think you gotta go one or the other. Yeah, Control seems to be popular. Hey Seth, with Tomer being let go, who will take his place on Commander? Oh my god. Alright, opponent's got the Sweeper. Who will take his place on Commander Clash? Uh, most likely, most likely that'll be me. I will probably be doing the, the hosting role for this season. Get in, hit ya. Well, opponent's a nine. Can we force through the last few points of damage? Expressive iteration. Yeah, Death Shadow with Dragon's Race Channeler and Mana Gorger looks, uh, looks sweet, Halfling. Seems like it could be pretty good. Opponent. Oh, no, Tomer's not fired. He's just, uh, he's just not on this season of Command, the upcoming season of Commander Clash. How do we know if it's a Grim deck? Uh, if it's Grixis and Controly, I, I, I consider it a Grim deck. Or blue white unit. Like, basically blue X control. That is that is my definition of a Grim deck. Well. Black Staff. Hedgia. Well, I'm kinda tempted to sack this. Stone Coil X1. Do we sack the Hopa Gripper? Ooh. Yeah, I think we do. Alright, opponent. What you got? You can't wrath us. Black Staff? Getting the job done against Control? Thanks to <laughs> Hopa Gripper value? I mean, they can still have. Tarantula Gearhawk, Flashback Magmopus, cast it for free, Wrath Your Board, tap you out, win the game. Which, uh, wow, they don't have it. No Tarantula Gearhawk, and we got there. Okay, that is the Black Staff power. That's what the deck can do. And now we can bring in some counters, which should be good against our opponent's deck. Slow down those Wraths, get in there, close out the game. I want to try a Neoform Affinity build with Hoof in Historic. Ooh. Yeah, that could, now that we get a Thought Monitor, that could work. Although we need more Affinity Threats, I think. That's... Wait. Didn't they have a treasure and enough land so that they could go land Torrential Gear Hulk? Or no? Um... Yeah, I feel like we need more 
I feel like we need more uh, seven mana affinity things. Like getting thought monitors nice. Unless, unless I, it's hard to keep track. Because I keep releasing cards in such just like weird, in such weird ways. Uh, where you got to go like and look through all the packs and try to figure out what is and is not in the set. Unless I'm missing it and there actually is like a mirror enforcer or something. I think if you got one more like mirror enforcer type effect, then that would be kind of insane. We just thought monitor it'll be interesting. We just thought monitor, I wonder if it'll be if it'll be consistent enough or not. Um yeah, keep the ornithopter. Alright, run it bring in the counters, run it back. Mirror Enforcer is in no Salamander. That's still probably that's still probably enough. Yeah, that's that's probably enough. To at least make it worth trying. Ooh, treasure vault action, eh? No payoffs. I think we actually get a mulligan this. Alright, that's better. Uh well, no thought seize, please. We need to get down this black staff. About it. Tap land. Well, Blackstaff, go. Pass the turn. Yeah, it's, it's a cool idea of a list. Like, Blackstaff has potential to be a powerful card. Well, land, Silver Raven. Scry for a counter. Do not need to land, hope a Gerber go. I want my Underworld Cookbook and Oval Chase Daredevils. Oh, I wonder I wonder if that'd just be too busted for historic. Opponent disfigures. Now well, pass the turn. Uh skilled animator is the main reason you can't play Luris. Too uh too expensive. Narset. Interesting. Opus. Ooh. Do we care? I don't know if we care. Ugh. Mm. Do we have to kill the Narset is a question. Letting it draw again doesn't feel great. Yeah, I guess we should. Ugh. All right, killing Narset. Yeah, we haven't drawn. We haven't drawn a counter. If we can draw a one counter, things get a lot better. Prismari commands also kind of insane against us. Animating plot was sweet. If you can actually get it going, the black staff decks I saw were. Uh, doing well were plow decks. Hmm. I wonder, it could be fun, it could be fun to try. I wonder if it's consistent enough. And our set's definitely super obnoxious. About it. Drown Catacombs. A quick reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom, and if you need some magic cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com. Trying to get into historic, what's the best? Oh, boy, Sai. I feel your pain. Um, There is no very good way or cheaty way to get wild cards. Basically, basically, you spend a ton of money. You spend a ton of money, and... Uh, you open a ton of packs, and you hope you open wild cards. It is a painful, painful system uh, that is very not friendly to players. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's basically it about it. Yeah, I wish I wish I had better news for you, but ouch! All right, there's the Prismari command. Opponent takes three. Ugh, where's those counters? If you're good at events, you can go infinite. Really? 
opponent discards a magma opus. What are what are the what are the what is the math on? Oh jeez, oh, so the opponent's all about this reanimation stuff. Yes. All right, so this one we're going to game. We're going to game three. <laughs> Fair enough. So I wonder what the math is like. As far as going infinite, I so I know it's pretty easy to like profit on magic online events i is there a is there a breakdown somewhere of how, what it is on arena because i was under the impression it was that it was like re, like it, some ridiculous win percentage because don't they pay out like oh, what is arena can we just go oh i guess we can look at it after this game we can try to go and look at the look at the event and figure it out i'm actually curious now well maybe we, all right let's go down hope of gurupers for relic of progenitus running like that because we can always animate the relic of progenitus as well oh and limited limited doesn't get you wild cards does it like does going infinite and limited help you play historic or like really help you play historic i guess it helps you in the sense that i guess it helps you in the sense that you'll have whatever cards happen to be in the in the set but that doesn't help you get like hmm well untap land silver raven i think we gotta scry for a land Ugh, black staff to the bottom ornithopter go Come on, lads. Come on, lads. You can get infinite on packs from limited. Now, well, there's a land. That is good. Blackstaff. Vault Scourge. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Opponent. A counter would make me feel a little bit, a little bit more comfortable. Land passes. Well, Blackstaff, Ornithopter. So you get three packs, not counting. Wow. <laughs> They couldn't have killed anything with Drown the Log. Killed either of the other two with Drown the Log. That's a little bit weird. I guess the bottom line is that arena economy is pretty horrendous as far as formats like Historic. Enough so that I switched to Moto recently and don't play much arena anymore. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Richard was talking about that. How he, how he switched to playing standard on Moto just because... It was so expensive for him to play on Arena. <laughs> so he so he switched back to Moto cuz it was the budget client. Well, look, we'll look at the at the draft in a minute. I'm I'm kind of curious to look at the numbers. I wish there was a Hey, what's up, Dermot Popper? How are you? I wish there was an easier way. I really uh, What do you think about Wizards selling wild cards? Do you think that would Do you think that would solve the issue? Hmm. Well, go to combat. I feel like we're about to get wrecked. Attack. Disfigures. Opponent goes to eleven. Silver Raven. Mystical Dispute. Sure. Pass the turn. Opponent attempts. Opponent. Four. Cards in hand. Tap land. Passes. I don't go to combat. Attack you. Oh! Another removal spell. Silver Raven. Hmm. 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh, crimin, crimin to the max! Oh my god! Opponent. Oh my god! Hey, what's up, Top Bad Dolab? How are you? Opponent passes. I mean, we got a bunch of counters in the deck. We just haven't we haven't drawn any of them. Uh, we we did successfully combo with a with a Sarah Well, okay, Silver Raven. What say you? Okay, we have successfully successfully resolved a one one. Opponent untaps. Draws Nicobo lost the Ravager. Well, we'll discard a black staff. We untap. Arena wants to leave that adept right. Well Silver Raven go attacking. About it takes it to seven. Arena should have function the same as MTGO. Without the crappy Craigslist bot run selection, think Moto, MMO Auction House, so everyone can be its own marketplace. That would be pretty sweet. Opponent, untap land, five. So this means one million percent that they have Torrential Gear Hulk, and we're about to, uh, about to lose. Well, okay. Well, here comes all the lands. Oh, wow, so close. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just got to attack. Opponent, as predicted, Torrential Gear Hulk. For another fatal push. Well, yeah, pass the turn. Opponent, the record is zero in zero. This is the, the first match we've played. Well, we can't animate the land with Skilled Animator, because then we just lose everything to Torrential Gear Hulk. Like, our opponent playing the Shock Land untapped, it's about 100% that there's Torrential Gear Hulk there. Like, it is, it is essentially a guarantee. So if we do that, then we just lose our Treasure Vault, and we lose our other things. So I don't think we, we really have an option to... Uh, to attack with the treasure vault that turn. We have a new donation from Lucid. Uh, $3 donation. Hey Seth, I want to play a big dumb aggro deck in modern that's off the beaten path. Any sig. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ah. Uh, um, any suggestions that's off the beaten path outside of mono green or mono red? Ooh. Hmm. Um, I mean, ugh, a big dumb aggro deck that's not mono green or mono red. What about if you put them together and play Gruel? <laughs> hey, what's up, Winter Milan? How are you? How was uh, how was the new home? Oh, yeah. We we're supposed to look at the drafts. I was reminded. Uh, I was reminded too late. Remind me earlier next game. All right, well, we'll try this. No black staff, but... All right, land or elves. No black staff, but we do have the animator. Stone coil to the bottom, ornithopter. Yeah. 
Now let's see what our opponent's got. Mountain. Ooh, bard class. Sweet. Passes. Uh, well. Stone coils are a bit. Hit you with the silver raven. Down to 19. Go. Seen a pretty sick party deck using changelings. Ooh, yeah, I mean, party is definitely really powerful if you can, uh, if you can get some stuff to stick on the battlefield. The challenge is, like, getting stuff to stick on the battlefield. Um, opponent, legend, le oh my god, legend. Well, this is what bard class does when, uh, when bard class is drawn. Oh. Yeah, I guess we gotta play another stone coil. Yeah, we might we might be a little too slow here. Boat it, a devs. Yeah, stone coil's trying hard. Fully levels up bard class. Yeah, I mean, this is just where our opponent plays their entire deck, though. We, we've we been on this side. Like, a fully leveled up bard class does just win the game, and we cannot get it off the battlefield. We're, we're hoping for some miracles. Opponent passes. Silver. Good old Silver Raven coming to save the day. I don't think Ginger Brood is enough here. Well, skilled animator. On the Ornithopter. So we get him for 5, 6. And next turn, 5, 6. I mean, they're going infinite no matter what, right? Yeah, I mean, hit them with everything. They're, they're just, I mean, we gotta just hope they fizzle. So hit them with everything we can. Pass the turn. All right, about it. All right. Arata draws two. Uh, I mean, it's it's really hard to not win if you untap with a fully leveled up bard class. I don't think I've ever, have we ever not won when we've had a fully leveled up bard class? I don't think so. I mean, I think they either fizzle and we win, or they go infinite in... Yeah, I mean, opponents. I don't think we're going to block our way out of it. Because when, when Bard Class wins, they play their entire deck. Is it easy to win with Bard Class and Historic? I mean, if you fully level up a Bard Class, you should just... <laughs> you should just win in basically any format. The problem with bard class is the problem with bard class is uh when you don't draw bard class. Like that's that's the thing. It's kind of like a little bit like waste knot, like how waste knot is very powerful, but when you don't draw it, you know, your deck is full of things that are not very good without bard class. So bard class is kind of the same way. Opponent goes on the big attack. Well, we'll see. Draws some more cards. Adds. How'd they get that much mana? Uh, okay. Why did they get six mana? I'm so confused. One, two, they attacked with three creatures. Why did they get the amount of mana they got, though? I'm so confused. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures at that much mana, opponent, gonna go back to drawing. Huh. Okay. Domri. 
I mean, if they kill skilled animator, do we even have lethal? One, two. I'm not sure we do, because this can block. Fights the ornithopter. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Sure. Another Grand Warlord. Rada draws some cards. Well, I guess it's going to come down to this top deck. Mox Amber draws some cards. Hey, thank you, the Goosenator. Oh, so they had a bunch floating. But then why'd they go to combat? And not do all this before? I'm very confused by what happened there. Like, if they had mana, why why did they not keep doing this before combat and win? Why did they stop and take a break and go attacking? Yeah. Well. Huh. Well, that's what Bard class can do. Block, block. Yeah, there's... Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I think our opponent should have won the game there, but I am very confused by what our opponent was trying to do. Uh, so, I guess we bring in Portable Hole, because that can stop a Bard class. And go down Hope of Gurper. And run it like that. Um, all their stuff should be free, so you shouldn't ever need green mana once you have, uh, once you have Bard class going. Well, how did, mm, I don't think they whiffed, though, because they immediately played, they immediately played a Domri after combat. So I don't know how, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm confused by what our opponent was doing there, but I, I, yeah, I just, I really have no idea. Um, hmm. I think we need to find an answer to Bard Glass. Like, Bard Glass is, is what this is going to be about. About it. Plays a land. Well, land. Hit ya. Ornithopter. Vault Scourge. Pay the life. Blackstaff. Yo. Yeah. Uh, how long are you planning on getting kicked around with this deck before you switch? <laughs> I mean, we've played we've played a match. I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if I would consider losing a match to Grixis Control <laughs> that was in super close, getting kicked around. But about it, levels up hard class. Land. Galia. About it. Thinking. And. Hey, what's up, Gory? How are you? Rada. Goes attacking. Well, we will. Portable Hall. Get rid of the Bard class. Stone Coil. Hit you for five. Opponent. Domri. <laughs> okay, fights the Volskirt. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> uh, well, we will untap. Blacks have the Ornithopter. Hit ya, hit ya. I mean, you can see without the Bard class, be, the Bard class deck performs a little bit, a little bit less good. Yeah, I mean, when you cast Galia for free, it's actually really powerful. Have you ever listened to White Denim? If you like Southern Rock Psychedelic with tons of time changes, highly recommend it. I have never listened to White Denim. I will have to. I will have to actually. Uh, I'll have to check it out. It sounds cool. Have a good day so far. Killing time until guitar lesson in an hour. Ooh, what are you? Uh, what are you learning on guitar, Gory? Hey, 
Anything anything in specific? Um Let's go down another Hope of Go up a glass casket. Go up a glass casket. Try it like that. Oh, yeah, that's the biggest thing Historic is missing, is they don't have very many good one-drops uh, that are legendary. That's definitely, like, the weakest spot in the curve. Oh, we got a Black Staff. Yeah, we'll try it. All right, opponent empty in the hand. Well, land and Silver Raven. Yeah, I mean, the game plan is mostly keep... Keep Bard class off the battlefield if possible. <laughs> that is that is our primary goal. Do they have the Bard class? Trognar. Um. You know, I think we actually take that trade. Stone coils are a bit. X two. Go. Stone Coil is going to be good here. Opponent plays a land. Grand Lord, Lord Rada. Passes. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, land. Blackstaff. All that glitters. Ooh. Ooh. Standy. 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 We're going to stand D. About it. Land. And passes. Oh, we draw the portable hole, too. Well, 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 well. Uh, all that glitters. And. Land untapped. Portable hall. <laughs> oh, get rid of that Drogdar. And, uh, alright, we're going to attack. That's a, a decent, a decent snow coil. Jay Bender, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. How are you liking the idea of Esper Sentinel, Thought Monitor, Zabaz in this deck? Esper Sentinel gr would be great in this deck. Esper Sentinel would be great. Um, Zabaz, I don't think would be very good. Thought Monitor, ah, Thought Monitor, I think is going to be very good in the format, but I'm not sure how good it would be in this deck in specific. I think you'd want a more go wide themed deck, but uh, but yeah, I think the big one, the big one is a uh, opponent passes and dead. There we go. That's what that's what the Black Staff could do. That's what it could do. That was not bad. All right, so let's look at this draft. The possibility of going infinite in arena events. I'm actually really curious. Oh, let me let me see. KC3 Pro. What is the yawning portal? What is this? The Yawning Portal. Welcome to the Yawning Portal. Finest tavern in the water deep. Bring a 60 card singleton deck that's ready to explore. When you've cast two spells during your turn, you venture into a dungeon. At the end of your run, you receive a rule book card style from Adventures of Forgotten Realm. Has anyone played this event? What is what is this event? Huh. Hey, what's up, Jeremy Freeman? How are you? Get, get some ugly cards. <laughs> All right, so so draft. All right, we're not we're not playing Yawning Portal. I'm curious. Uh, so so traditional draft. It costs what ten thousand ten thousand gold. Why is this? on the screen. All right, so 10,000 gold. One pack, two pack, four pack. Six pack. 
if you play a premier draft is that the so this is the best of one draft hmm so so the ev i mean but wait so with this amount of gold couldn't you buy you could buy 10 packs right isn't a isn't a pack a, a thousand gold so a pack is a thousand gold so to do a draft you're you're spending 10 10 packs worth of gold wait that can't be why is this why is this the best way to get cards i'm so confused so you could buy 10 booster packs with this amount of gold instead oh because you get back some amount of gems too okay I I got gotcha. you. The gems are what what helped. So if you get to if you get to five wins, you basically break even. I guess you come out very slightly ahead in gems, but you basically break even in gems, so you get your packs for free. If you're if you're at three wins, then you're then you're losing money. Then right, you would be getting five packs. And you be uh, so so you lose money at three wins. Okay, hmm. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but that's still like a relatively high win rate, right? Three wins is is even. So three wins, you would be getting five packs and a thousand gems. So you're down 500 gems and gems are what two so 200 gems for a pack so yeah you're i guess you're basically breaking even if you go three and two but five and three that is that is a i think that's the thing that people people miss with a lot of these conversations is that five and three is actually actually kind of insane like that's a that's a very high unsustainable win rate when you consider that like pro players what is the what do you pay for like the actual constructed events oh this only gives oh this just gives individual card rewards so it's a thousand gold no i mean So if you go two win, well, I guess that's still a pretty high win rate. But I think people underestimate how hard it is to consistently, to consistently win at a, like a 65, 70% win rate. Like that's just, that's never been, I kind of want to, let's try the Maze of Zen deck. Like that's just not sustainable. That's like winning sixty seven point five percent of the time. Obviously, this is on arena. The competition's lower, but that's like Pro Tour Hall of Fame. Like if you look at like LSV stats or something, they aren't consistently like the best players in the world don't consistently win more than that percentage of the time. obviously a little easier on arena again because you're not playing against all other pro level players but eh, i gotta guild some it all right let's see if we get someone with mazes in uh in the draft itself you can get an edge uh so basically like if uh, basically if you're good at drafting uh is then you then you can win more. That that makes sense. I think that would be true. Do you think that a Jeskai Pact of Negation, Chance of Glory Gideon of the Trials, Bad Rack type control deck is viable in modern? Uh, or to get to Mythic? Aw, we needed this guild summit. Oh, they have multiple removal spells? Alright, well, Abril Grazer. Guild gate into play. Mazes end into play. 
Come on, no discard. We need this guild summit. This is all of our hopes and dreams. Riding on this one enchantment about it. Dragon Skull Summit. Oh, wow. I am sort of shocked that they did not take this guild summit. Okay. Guild summit. So now we're in business. Now we're drawing cards. Pass the turd. All right, that went better than I thought. So what makes farming these events worthwhile then? I'm at close to 60 print limited. It pays off. I mean, 60% is a very solid, a very solid win rate in limited. Opponent. Meals eluding. And... I mean, I think that limited is the the best way to, if you're good at it, it, is the best way to build a collection. But I don't know if, I wonder if it's the best way to build a historic collection. It seems very inefficient. Because you basically have to, like... It seems very inefficient because you have to essentially, like... Well, Guildgate and Guildgate. Draw some cards. Plaza of Harmony gains some life passenger. It seems inefficient because if you're trying to get a historic collection, you have to do a Forgotten Realms draft. So you're going to open a ton of packs of Forgotten Realms, which don't really do much towards getting you to historic, but then you get a, some number of reward packs... And then those reward packs, you can spend, uh, you can open, and then you'll get wild cards in some percentage of them. And then the wild cards can be spent on, the wild cards can be spent on, uh, on historic cards. Ooh. Hmm. Well, uh, sorry. Sorry, Blazer. We're going to sweep the board. Felidary tree. Cat. Oh. Oh, are we actually going to get a Maze's Edwin? We might be getting a Maze's Edwin. Uh, it's not as inefficient as you might think. I went from next to no historic stuff, to enough to build what I want to be jamming at a high win percentage and limited. Uh, you think it makes it worth... The thing that makes it worthwhile is the wild cards you get. How do you get wild cards from limited, though? Wouldn't it just be from the prize packs? Because you don't get wild cards from opening booster packs, right? So it's just from, like... Because you don't get... Am I am I wrong? Do you actually get wild cards out of your draft packs? Really? So you can open, like, a... So you go to sit down and do an Adventures of Forgotten Realm draft, and a mythic wild card pops up in place of your, your mythic. That doesn't sound right to me. That I, I I've done some drafts and I've never had a myth a wild card pop up in one of my drafts. Oh, the vault pro. Oh uh, yeah, I mean I guess if you do a ton of limited, the vault progress probably probably helps. I guess that's that's probably true if you play a lot of limited. I think uh from opening a ton of packs, I think that uh you get roughly a little somewhere around like one percent of the vault if you have a a completely full collection if you have a completely full collection and you open a pack and you get nothing out of it you get somewhere around one percent of the vault filled so i guess every every hundred packs every hundred packs that you would open would get you a vault that would give you a mythic wild card two rare and some lower rarity stuff okay i guess that makes sense because if you're doing a draft, you're opening, what, three packs, plus you get another, some numbers, rewards. So every draft, maybe you're filling the vault, like, 5 to 10%. So if every, like, 10 to 15 drafts, you're opening the vault, or 10 to 20 drafts, maybe. Okay, I can, I can see those numbers. Oh, I guess draft packs do have more cards, that's true. Although, yeah... I guess the commons and commons still uh, and uncommons still add up, so I guess a, a draft pack is more valuable. So it'd be slightly it would be slightly higher than a normal pack. You are right. 
How are we doing on these gates? Let's make a gate. Okay, so, I mean... We have one gate, two gate, three gate... You know what, let's just... You know, let's go Lowe's. Let's go Lowe's first. Play a go Lowe's. Get a gate. That we do not have yet, is it? Wow, we're... This is kind of working! Is Maze's End the new Tier 0? <laughs> Root. Alright, do we have Gruel? Yes. Uh, Orzov. Demir. Draw some cards. Make a cat. Man, maybe we're going to win with cats. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Abriel Grazer. Put a guild gate into play. Make a cat. While wow, this deck is kind of working at the moment, draw some cards. Might as well attack a little bit. Oh, Mises End! Stream on! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stream for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, so let's say you're trying to just get you're trying to just get the cards to from Jumpstart to play Historic. What would what would your technique be? What do you think the best technique is for someone that's trying to do that? So you would say if you're trying to get Jumpstart cards for Historic, you would play a ton of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms draft or whatever standard set, and then you would earn wild cards and spend those on on the set. Hey, what's up, Steven? Steema, I appreciate it. Good to see ya. Um, interesting. I mean, playing Jumpstart itself does have the upside of... I think we win here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we definitely win here. Root. We just got to make sure we get the right ones. Root. Boros. Azurius. Draw a bunch of cards. An opponent! <laughs> Sees it coming! Mazes and win in the first game. Maybe Mazes are good. Um, Jumpstart, I don't think you can go infinite. There's no... Jumpstart, uh, there's no going infinite. Because in Jumpstart... Jumpstart the economy is way different. You get two, you pay two thousand gold. You get two packs. You put them together. You play as many games as you want. Your first two wins will get you individual card rewards from the set. So basically, there's no way to get your money back. Basically, every every Jumpstart event that you every Jumpstart event that you play is two thousand gold or the equivalent in gems out of your collection so there's no there's no way to earn money back from the draft so you can't so it's not possible to go infinite because you're always going to have to pay the entry fee the upside is those two individual card rewards so you get two packs for the going rate and then you're going to get two rare mythic individual card rewards from the set you got to hope you Ugh. The biggest issue I think with jump, or one of the big issues with Jumpstart is, is the lack of any any duplicate protection. Like they technically, technically have duplicate protection, sort of not really, but but I think that's the the biggest thing that is missing is is real duplicate protection. They have when we talked we talked about it on Twitter and Wizards actually actually responded or someone from Wizards did and they said there is duplicate protection but then when they actually explained it what they meant is that when you get a fifth copy of a card it goes towards the vault or gives you gems back if it's a rare or mythic so it's not it's not the traditional duplicate protection of if you already have the cards you're not going to get those cards uh, until you open the whole rest of the set or whatever. 
Uh, we have a new donation from Winter Milan. $4.20. Thank you so much. A little ice cream money for playing my favorite type of deck. Are you a fan of, of the Mazes End? I mean, I think Mazes End's super fun, too. Thank you so much for the donation. Phone it. Get a thought he's our Golos, I assume. So, yeah. Wizards, uh, yeah. It's, it's definitely strange how they consider that duplicate protection. I guess it's like you get some gems and vault progress for your duplicates, but that's not not what I would think of as duplicate protection. But it's I, I will say it's better than last time. Because last time... Hey, what's up, Lo? Good to see ya. Because last time with Jumpstart, you were just getting... You were just getting, like, fifth through eighth copies of cards you already had repeatedly. That was the issue last time. Like, last time, I don't know if you played it last time, but that's how you end up with, like, eight Woe Striders. You'd have four from Theros Beyond Death, and then they reprinted it in Jumpstart, and then and then you would open more from Jumpstart, and then you have a whole bunch of cards that do nothing. So it is slightly upgraded compared to that because, because this time they're just not... The reprinted cards basically, they're the same version that are on Magic, uh, already on Magic Arena, rather than being jumpstart printings. So that means, huh? No red mana still. I guess we could have just mazes end for it. All right, there's. Put the Guild Gate into play. Put Gateway Plaza into play. Well, we will see. The problem is this Arcanus. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can find the deck list and I'll update it. So, so yeah. So, it was even worse last time. So, it is a slight improvement, but... But it's still definitely not what I would consider... A deck list should be updated. Still not what I would consider friendly by any stretch. I know it's off topic, but uh, opinion on that Gideon of the Trials deck I was asking about. Oh, uh, so I think Unbreakable Wit. I think that that's definitely a deck that you can build in Modern. And we've played some, like, against odds style decks. So I think that it's a deck that you can build it and it'll be functional and it'll get some wins. Uh, I don't know if I would consider it, like truly competitive i guess it depends on your your definition of competitive but i don't think you would most likely most likely be winning tournaments with it but i think you'd win some games with it and do it in a in a spicy a spicy fun way uh, 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 uh. we really needed that sweeper yes we didn't hit any graveyard hate that's the biggest issue no graveyard hate, no card draw. Well, gain a bit of life. See what we can find. Can I explain the vault on Arena? So the vault was supposed to be a temporary thing that they were going to fix. Because basically, when they launched Arena, they made it so there was no, no trading, no any economy. So there's an issue of what do we do when people get more than four copies of a card? Because they, they locked it so you can only have a maximum of four copies of a card uh, in your collection. So there's a big issue of like, well, that's not fair. Wizards can't just like sell us, you know, a bunch of packs and you open four copies. And then when you get the fifth copy, you just get no value for it. That, that seems very, very unfair. So there was a big kind of uproar there was kind of a big uproar about that. And this temporary, supposedly, solution was uh, was the vault. So the vault was, once you already have four copies of a common or uncommon, uh, I think originally it also included rares and mythics, but that ended up changing, which we'll get to. But uh, if you already have four copies of a common or uncommon and you open one in a draft, in a uh, anywhere, basically... You won't actually get that card in your collection, but you will get what they call vault progress, where basically that vault starts to fill up. Once the vault gets to 
which I believe takes, jeez, oh, 900 useless commons and 300 uncommons, something like that. Like, it's a lot of packs. Like, if I have a f absolutely full, an absolutely full collection of a set, it takes me around 100 packs to open the vault. Maybe, I think it's slightly less. It might be like 90 packs. But, uh, but yeah, so basically, and then when you open it, you get a mythic wild card, two rare wild cards, and some number of commons and uncommon wild cards. So essentially, you open those useless cards, and Wizard's way to compensate you for opening the useless cards is, is, uh, through filling that vault and giving you some wild cards. Uh, it's not it's not generous but it is something the other issue is it was supposed to be temporary like when it was announced it was supposed to be this is a temporary solution we're gonna add something better to replace this but now it's been two or three years and yeah we're dead this game got too many thought seizes um so yeah it's never it's never actually been it's never actually been fixed. Yeah, it is a mythic and two rares for 100 packs worth of stuff or whatever. So it, it's not generous, but it is technically something. So they're not just straight up like stealing your cards from you. Uh, Gory Adverse, $5 donation. I refuse to play Arena due to the economic design. Every time I think about it, I just donate $5 to you. Well, uh, I appreciate it, Inverse. And uh, Arena is great at a lot of things, and I enjoy playing Arena quite a bit, but I will say uh, a generous economy is not at all one of the things that uh, that Arena does well. That is, that is not it. And then, uh, I mentioned earlier, I think, if I'm remembering right, originally your extra rares and mythics went in there too. They changed that to uh, your rares and mythics now refund you a a slight bit of gems so if you if you open a fifth copy of a rare uh you will get a oh geez so much discard if you open the fifth copy of a rare you get 20 gems if you open the fifth copy of a mythic you get 40 gems which then, in theory, you can use to to buy more buy more packs to replace it or whatever. Again, not not what I would consider generous, but I guess technically technically something. It's not literally nothing. What do you think would be a great solution for the economy? Um, well. Be more generous uh, would be nice, but my well, opponent's trying to find their lands. But I think when it comes down to it, wow! All right, opponent passes. Well, we will uh, very quickly get down this fellow retreat and trust that that's going to be good for us. So, what would I? Oh, opponent just cannot find a land. Uh, so, what would I do to fix the economy? My preferred solution would be something similar to what other games use. I've never been able to figure out why Wizards chose this economic setup. And I know some people some people like it. Some people think that other options uh, are are worse. Personally, I like what other people do, which is Oh, wow, they had an answer. I like what other games do, which is, wow, that is a blowout. I like what other games do, which is uh, they allow you to trade your cards essentially in dust. So basically, if you look at like Hearthstone, if you have a mythic that you don't want, you can turn that into dust and then you can spend the dust to buy the cards you do want. I think it's normally about four to one. So like if you take and have four useless rares that you don't want, you can, you can uh, trade that in to get one theoretically useful rare that you do want one of the problems with that setup is one of the criticisms of that setup from some people is they say it feels bad i guess the concern some people have is what if i dust a card that i want later which i think is a a line that wizards has used before like oh we we want to 
we want you to keep all your cards because I believe Wizard said this. Oh, boy, I got to do a history of Magic Arena because I swear Wizard said, "Oh, don't worry, we want you to keep all these cards because they're going to be playable. They're going to be playable even once they're out of standard. They're going to be playable. Don't worry, we're going to have all these cool events where you can play all these cards. So you got to keep every." You know, every useless rare, every useless common in your collection, because uh, because you're gonna you're gonna need them. You're gonna be able. To, you're gonna have to do something with them, uh, and uh, that has not actually played out in practice. Uh, n I do not think you can use uh, use your cards for much of anything, but uh, but I get what you're saying. Like, it, it is a a fear, I guess. That's not bad. There is a fear that you will you will dust stuff that you want and then end up regretting it later. And I think that is... I can understand why people would be worrying about that, but it works for other games. And I and in general, other games are... Yeah, that was a good Golo spin. And in general, other games are, are less expensive for a lot of players. I'm 100% a hoarder. I was always worried I might need it later, but if I dust something I need later, it's my fault. Give me the option. Though I think it's especially weird for Magic because the culture of magic is people are used to it like rotation happens you trade away your cards before rotation like the culture of magic is one of trading is one of managing your collection so it's odd that arena does not actually really have that option and every other form of magic does so i think the expectation of players is just that they will have that option so I think that's part of the the weird the weirdness. One, two, three, four. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess we I guess we keep going. Get a or is a man, we are we're getting close. We're getting close. Are we gonna take down one of the best decks in the historic format with Mesa Z? Uh it's kind of disingenuous. Wait. But it's kind of disingenuous as you disregard all the other stuff you get for that $24. Usually it's multiple wild cards and whatever cards you open. Wait, what, $24? I'm so confused. What are we spending $24 on? But, so I would like to see players have... No, I didn't say it would get... I wish it would get trading. Uh... Or something along those lines. And the choice to not have any sort of collection management is weird. From where we are at now, with the choices that have already been made, uh, all right, let's do this. Get a, oh, we gotta actually look. All right, we don't have Rakdos. Get a Rakdos guild gate. One, two, three. Maze's end. Get a Azurius Guild Gate. Replay Maze's end. Pass it. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The fair old <laughs> Maze's end kill. $24 for one Mythic Wild Card. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is. A Mythic Wild Card is very expensive. Uh, all right, opponent. Thought seizes, sure. Grow spiral, mazes end. The cost, the current cost of a of a mythic wild card is what makes me worried about. Is what makes me worried about wizards selling wild cards, because I've I've asked people about this before, and usually, if you ask people how much they would want to pay or be willing to pay for a wild card, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I think we just win supernaturally. Nine. Get a wait. Am I miscounting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So get is it? Okay, get Celesnia. Maze's end. Yeah, is it? Actually, let's get this, because we know this is good. <laughs> but the the price that people... Wow, this has been our best deck. This is the deck that's actually worked today. Um, 
But the price that people have said they've been willing to pay when I've asked is usually really low. Like, like a dollar for five rare wild cards or something. <laughs> like, like way, 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 way less than than uh than Wizards is currently selling them for. So I'm afraid that selling wild cards would not actually be a satisfactory solution for most people. Because the price that Wizards gets now is high. So they're not going to want to just sell something they're selling now for 10 or $20 for a dollar. So the price that they would put them at would be, would be uh, I think, higher than players would be happy with. So it might not actually be a good solution. Well, let me see, X got. I sent these Yankee Brews of mine a few months ago. May have fell into your spam. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, X got. Uh, if I didn't respond, my, my apologies. I try to respond to every every email, even if it's just to say, you know, thank you, and I got it. Dragon Boats for the 11th month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, they would probably make it gems only. That does... That does sound like something wizards would do, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, wizards. Wizards, wizards, wizards. Uh, about it. God, bat. Ooh. The Yadaro deck looks fun. Uh, Glot, x Glot. Bona hits us. Now to 17. Now it grows spiral. Mazes end. Hell, we get the card draw going. Guild summit. We gotta get enough gates so we can sweep away a Croxa, which is gonna be. That is gonna be tough. Guild gate. Draw a card. Oh, yeah. Abash is one of my favorites. That's a sweet card. Those are some sweet lists, uh, x -Glot. I appreciate it. Infinite Serac. We pulled off the combo a couple of times, but the deck, <clears throat> it kind of felt, um, it kind of just felt like a typical ramp deck. The deck itself was kind of meh. But it was, it was sweet to actually see, to get to see the combo go off. Because the combo is pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's explore. Put a guild gate into play. Plaza of Harmony. Grow Spiral. Ooh, another one. Gateway Plaza. Pay the one. Pa Maybe this deck's actually good. Yeah, I want to try in Modern too. In Historic, we had to use Omniscience, so it ended up being just like an Omniscience ramp deck. In Modern, having a cheaper way to go infinite uh, in Rooftop Storm definitely helps a ton. Uh, I have not tried Yawning Portal. How is it, Ted? Is it uh is it worth trying? No, Gilgate draw. Grazer. Gilgate draw. Guild summit. We're probably drawing plenty of cards at a plaza. Explore. <laughs> Gilgate. Draw two. I mean, we might just be fast enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do we just win next turn? Do we just win next turn? Are we just like straight up racing some of the best decks in Historic with 
with Maze's End. Yanni Parta was okay. I played it a ton over the weekend. I had like a 15-3 record because I played Slesnia Stompy and everyone was trying to be cute with the dungeon theme. Yeah, I haven't tried it. I might have to try it. Wait, am I du double counting one? One, two, three, uh, four. Oh, I think I did miss that. Yeah. So I don't think we win this. I think we need two more turns. So we get to... Well, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Could we still win this turn? All right, let's Guildgate draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six. Root. Get. Ores of and Azure. Oh my god. The hardest part about this deck is just making sure you don't double up on the wrong lands. And Gruel draws some cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not uh, eight. So we need to draw one. Oh, come on. Come on. We did not. Grow Spiral. Come on. Come on. We need that guild gate. Oh, Maze's End. All right, that's fine. Uh, well, put a Maze's End into play. Aberrell Grazer. We win next turn. Almost a million percent. Put a Maze's End into play. Grazer. <laughs> put a Plaza Harmony into play. And go. Kill us, opponent. Kill us if you can. <laughs> Grazer's been good in this deck. I think Grazer's saving us. Yeah, we were one short of of uh, fetching those ma mazes, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we could fetch up to nine if we drew one naturally to put into play with, uh, with like the grow spiral. Then we would be fetching up ten. So we're we're one one short. I mean, we got it here for sure because we have triple mazes end. So this turn we can just activate all the mazes ends and win. Uh, does the Asian guy in your YouTube channel, uh, Krim, have a YouTube channel, or does he just post on your channel? Uh, Krim streams, uh, at twitch.tv slash the Asian Avenger, um, but he does not have a YouTube, uh, the only YouTube stuff he does is, is Goldfish stuff. Oh, well, actually, that's not quite true. I, I believe he has a, an anime podcast. But, outside of the anime podcast, all of his magic... All of his magic stuff is uh, is on the Goldfish channel. Do we have Demir? No. Draw two cards. Oh, no. Wait, that's fine. Play Azurius. Maze is end. Uh, Golgari. Oh, the deck is busted. The deck is busted. It's busted. I uh, busted is a strong word. I don't think it's actually like breaking the format, but it's been better than I thought. We're actually like crushing people with Maze's End. Maybe the format's not prepared for for Maze's End. It is a cheesy win, but it's it's working. It's working. First time tuning into the stream, long time uh, watching on YouTube, love the content. Hey, thank you, ZanoZio. Good to have you at the stream. Did you see Winota has a 68% win rate with a target on his back in standard? Yeah, standard. Oh, standard. It's rotating. <laughs> Let's just go with that. It's rotating. I can't wait for rotation. I mean, there's just so many. The list of busted cards. For my Coria and Alderaan is so insane. Like Alderaan is obviously the biggest influence overall, and that's after like a million 
a million of his cards ended up getting banned. Huh. Well, rest in peace, in. But, uh, Ikoria's pretty busted, too. Ikoria gave us... Gave us companions, it gave us emergent ultimatum, and it gave us Winota. Is Twitch back to barely working? Huh. It looks good on my end. We had the issue, like, a, a long time ago, but I haven't had any drop frames since then. Is it worth, uh, is it worth to put a Nylaeus intervention in the deck since the deck makes a lot of mana? Um, <clears throat> you could play a big spell in the deck. I don't know if I would go with... Oh, I really want this. Rest in peace was gonna be really good. Um... I don't know if I would like Nylaeus intervention in specific. I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what it really does. Uh, like, getting lands is fine, but I don't think it's, like, especially... Especially helpful with what the deck's trying to do. Because there's ways we can get lands directly on the battlefield. So getting lands into our hand isn't as exciting. I might consider, like, a Hydroid Crossus or something, though. Yeah, I'm surprised. Maybe they just don't care. Which sounds strange, but... Apparently they just don't really care about rest in peace i thought they had two thought seasons too uh when's the next viewer submitted commander clash i have a funny idea to use godzilla and fight its own elks bambi vs godzilla that does sound uh well it's not gonna be good is it um that does sound funny next viewer submitted clash is probably gonna be like i would say probably three weeks most likely well actually i guess we can discard a a forest. And trust that this fellow retreat might get the job done. About it. Castle Lockwain. Stornex, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, make a cat. Pay the one. Not gonna rest in peace. Pass the turn. About it. Felidary retreats a nice backup plan for the deck. Since we're putting so many lands into play anyway. Binding. Alright, well there that goes. Go, Los. Maze's end. Guildgate. Hit ya. <laughs> Felidary Retreat needs better cast sounds. It probably does. Yeah, Hydride Crosses would be would be an easy addition to the deck. Corvald. Well, Corvald is a problem. That is very big. Actually, it's not that big, is it? Oh yeah, it still gets big. Well, go less. Felidary Retreat. Guildgate. Make a cat. Root. Oh, is there any way? Okay. Gruel. Or help me with this, chat. Gruel or <laughs> Gateway Plaza, Demir Celestia. So we can get Boros. We can get Is it? Make a cat. Make a cat. Pass the turn. Oh, this core vault's so big. It's so big. Yeah, that was a good Golo spin. That was that was not bad at all. We need card draw though. We've been missing card draw this game. Oh another binding. It's the Golos. Gilded Goose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this thing's just so big. Hits us. Sacks. Grows. A million damage. Yeah. 
I don't think this deck plays Heartless Act typically. They might have sideboarded it in. But in general, in the main deck, they don't play Heartless Act. Corvald smacks us. <gasps> yes. Oh, that is that is one of the draws we want to see for sure. One, two, three. Guild Summit. One, two, three, four, five. Draw five. Aboriel Glarazer. Put a land into play. Counters. Guildgate. Counters. Hit ya. Make ya jump. Grazer on blocking duty. Is Grazer gonna win us this game? After being brutally mocked for so many turns? Yeah, sometimes you gotta win the boring way. When there's a core vault, you can't really you can't really get picky. Great yeah, the reach on Grazer is big here. One, two, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we actually <laughs> We actually can win with with Mainz's end, can't we? Is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, because we have this gateway plaza as a gate too. Nine. So we actually just untap Mazes Edwin. Uh, Plaza's not, but we have this gateway. Oh, yes. <laughs> plaza of Harmony is not. Gateway Plaza is a five color gate. Um. That really wants to tap that maze's end. Just to make sure that we're not miscounting. Rue. Golgari. Or Actos. Grow the cats. Grow the cats. Wow, we get to win the fun way still. Maze's end. Pick it up. <laughs> the cats protect the gates oh I can't believe who would have thought who would have thought that Maze's End would just be like legitimately crushing people I did not expect that I will admit I did not expect that oh there is ooh if you have time to look at the deck between games, love to hear what you think. Let me let me let me see if I can take a, a quick peek, Zero. Uh Croxa Yadaro Fling. Uh I mean, I think that looks like a, a fun a fun kind of like Rakdos mid-range deck. Haven't played too much uh <clears throat> too much Yadaros, but it seems fun. Got good removal. Yadaro's a cool threat. <laughs> Don't know about the one Lutri, but uh that looks that looks fun to me. Uh, Taunter Abash. Taunter's a really cool card. Taunter, uh, Taunter always surprises me with its power, and Abash to, uh, to double the damage seems kind of insane, so I think that's a, that's a sweet combo. I like that. Uh, Blue, Red, Ugin. Uh, yeah, wait. Ooh, Oogian? Blue Red Oogian. Uh, well, it has a lot of busted cards. Goldspan is busted. Galazad's insane. Bone Crusher's good. Oogan's insane. That deck seems really strong. I mean, it's just got a lot of all star level, really powerful cards. Uh, Iron Craig Feet with Cracklum Power is kind of a cute synergy. So, uh, I would imagine this deck's pretty strong just because it's got a lot of individually standalone card, uh, standalone goads. Rakdos Scourge. I have not seen too much scourge, uh, scourging in standard. Hard to lose life, but, uh, I mean, this seems like a cool attempt. Malakari Birth can lose some life. Aghanim's Awakening. Shatter Skull Smashing. Yeah, those are, those are super fun ideas. Uh, do you know about the Yadaro Omen Synergy? 
I don't think so. What is the what is Udaru Omen synergy? Huh. On that note, though, everyone, I think. I think, yeah, I would say, I would recommend, I would recommend actually, uh, actually trying this deck, because it's kind of, it's, so this deck, I mean, it's like budget. Because of the mana base, it's really cheap to put together, and based on our experience, it actually is kind of, kind of crushing people. You need what? Not a rare, 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 three rares, seven rares, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, it's budget, fifteen rares, fifteen rares, even the sideboard, you got the rest in pieces and deafening clarions, you could substitute them. It's really cheap, and it actually seems very competitive. So, uh, that is... No, no, no. The the Mazes and Gates deck felt very competitive. The the other deck... Mm, um, it was fun to see the combo. But actually, I think I enjoyed playing Gates more than I enjoyed playing Acerak. This is a deck where the combo itself is funny, that you can go infinite with Venturing, but the deck was pretty clunky, and it just felt like a, a typical like ramp deck. I, I actually think the Maze's End deck was spicier and cheaper and more competitive. So if I was going to spend wild cards on one, I would probably I would probably be choosing this one. Uh yeah, budget magic goes up tonight. Uh ruin. Yeah, spoiler season gets in the way, so sometimes a gameplay video gets missed. Uh if you have omniscience, you can just cast a Sarak again and again and again and venture through any of the non non tomb of annihilation dungeons. Usually usually lost mine of a uh, Fandelver because you get the drain mode. So basically you cast it until you go through the dark pool room 20 times and drain your opponent out of the game. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so it's going up tonight, Modern Budget Magic. On that note, though, uh, you can pick up a Yudar from the Graveyard with Omen in response to the shuffle in trigger. Ooh, that's a, that's super cute, x goal. I haven't seen that before. Uh, so is Jank on the menu for HH? Are there any deck lists yet? Uh, Historic Horizons. I don't have deck lists yet. I've still been doing spoilers. And we have like a week until it releases. But there's going to be a ton because because uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to try. So expect a lot of Horizons, uh, Historic Horizons coming up after it releases. On that note, though, I think that that brings us to the end for today because it's podcast day. So I got to scurry off upload the podcast but we'll be back tomorrow probably play some moto i don't know if it'll be modern or vintage cube let me know i don't know send me a send me a tweet or a message and let me know let me know what you're thinking but uh but yeah so uh definitely be back tomorrow 21 ish hours from now to have some more fun uh, in the meantime Check out the podcast. Check out the replay YouTube. If you missed anything, uh, there's always tons of sweet stuff going on on the replay YouTube, normal YouTube, budget magic. Uh, definitely playing Legacy Minotaurs. Might be on the YouTube, though. I'm not sure yet. Uh, YouTube podcast going up in a minute. Budget magic in modern. It's a sweet one going up tonight, so keep it out for that. Spoiler videos, of course. One more reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards, you get them over at cardkingdom.com. Even get a free goldfish stick most importantly thank you to all of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and seriously i appreciate y'all thank you so much for being amazing and hanging out through the jank through the losses through the wins having some fun so have an amazing evening have a great eh, tuesday morning and hopefully see you tomorrow afternoon so until then have a great night everyone and uh yeah see you tomorrow <laughs>